Hey, it's Mike here, and today a study that has highlighted a invisible way that animal agriculture is killing about 13,000 people a year in the US. Most people are not aware of this. I was not aware of this despite focusing on a lot of the negatives of animal agriculture for like five or six years in depth. This is new, or at least it hasn't made its way into the public eye, and I will say this is comparable in the amount of deaths to gun shootings, bang bang bye byes, I don't know, YouTube, please don't get me under review or I will spank you in the tube. <sighs> now they're gonna demonetize me out of spite, but spoiler alert, this has to do with air pollution, but it's in, again, a way that we were not aware of and it has a sort of interesting chemical reaction situation. And look, I know this is a bit of a negative topic, but we're gonna talk about solutions. The study does go over some solutions and there's one that's pretty obvious. They even look at different diets and how they would improve the situation. So it's all interesting stuff. Let's go. First note, this video is sponsored by my friends at Cotto, which is avocado ice cream, which is delicious. And we're gonna cover that in a bit. Second of all, it's been misting constantly, so my hair is excellent extra frizzy and chaotic, so I'll just comment before a bunch of you comment about it. There we go. All right, now that I've stated the important stuff, let's get to the actual study. It is called Air Quality Related Health Damages of Food. Yes, this is the second video I've done in a row that is completely centered around a study that was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. These proceedings were preceded by other proceedings. Anyway, they looked at all of US agriculture and these particular air pollutants, which we'll get to in detail, but a huge point here directly from the study, quote, of food related damages, 80% or 12,700 deaths are attributable to animal based foods when impacts of animal feed production are included and 20%, 3,200 to plant based foods. So of these air pollution deaths, it's 80% animal ag, despite animal foods making up a minority of the calories that are eaten, even in the US where we eat a ton of them. And I really have to echo the scale of this from the CDC. Yes, this is directly comparable to, you know, gun shooting deaths at around 14,400, so very notable. All right, now let's get into what we're actually talking about here. Hopefully I didn't ramble for too long. We're talking about airborne pollutants that are byproducts of agriculture and looking to the most deadly single aspect. We're talking about things emitted from livestock waste followed by other food sources behind those. And of these airborne pollutants, the vast majority of the lion's share goes to ammonia and things created as a result of ammonia release. And then other things follow behind that. Here's a list. Now we're talking nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and volatile organic compounds. So that means we're having a conversation about ammonia, what it does, what it turns into, the chemistry there. So what is ammonia? Well, you probably know of it as a fertilizer or something that, you know, animals pee out. It is NH3, so we're talking nitrogen and hydrogen, and yeah, of course, fertilizer because it's nitrogen. In terms of the chemical formula, it's half of ammonium nitrate, which is that synthetic fertilizer, which is super common for crops all around the world. And this isn't something that was put together by a bunch of rogue vegans. The industry itself recognizes this directly from the Journal of Dairy Science, quote, Ammonia emitted from animal feeding operations is an air pollutant contributing to the formation of fine particulate matter considered a major environmental risk to human health. And for those that don't know, PM 2.5, which was mentioned in that quote, just stands for a particle that is less than 2.5 microns which is very tiny and of particular concern. But ammonia alone isn't the concern here. We're talking about what happens to it when it enters the atmosphere and when it reacts with other compounds that are airborne. From this paper, ammonia reacts with atmospheric nitric and sulfuric acids to form PM 2.5. And from the EPA in particular, we're talking about ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate. So these are super fine pollutants that form in the atmosphere and they can travel quite a distance from this book. Quote, specifically ammonia gas reacts in the atmosphere to form fine particles that are subject to long range transport and are considered to be associated with elevated risk of all cause lung cancer and cardiopulmonary mortality. So we're talking about something that would perhaps contribute to like non-smoking related lung cancer deaths. And these two ammonium pollutants made up 50% of the PM 2.5 pollutants when measuring a typical California semi-urban environment where like half of my viewers are, ouch. 
So getting the idea, obviously this is bad. And again, about 80% of it comes from animal agriculture. So to take a mental emotional break, since we're talking about some negative stuff, let's talk about something a little bit more positive that everybody loves, ice cream. In particular, we're talking about vegan ice cream avocado ice cream from Kado. I'm super proud of Kado for a few reasons. One, they have made a creamy, amazing avocado ice cream. Two, they're taking over the shelves in the US. And three, when I say friends, it's not like your typical brand deal where it's like, oh, my friends over at Audible, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've heard so many Audible commercials. No, these are people that I knew before they started the company. The husband of the founder actually knew before I was even vegan. So it's awesome to see this company grow massively. They have a ton of flavors now. They have a peanut butter chocolate one that is new and super good. They've got a ton from like mint chocolate chip and on and on and on. And yes, I will say this is not a health food. I'm not trying to say that. It's a snack, a dessert, a treat. But that being said, it has miles lower saturated fat than cow ice cream and even way lower than some other vegan ones that are made of coconut milk, for example. Yet still so creamy. If you wanna try it, Kato is available nationwide in the US in stores like Walmart, Target, Publix, and Whole Foods, but you can also just buy it at katoicecream.com and use my code vegan20 for 20% off. That way you can get your frozen avocado delivered right to you. Anyway, that's not the real slogan, but it should be. Let's uh, move back to the study. We've got a bunch of interesting charts and a map here that's also extremely interesting. This is a map of deaths per kilometer in the US and being somebody from Iowa, I'm like, ugh. The Midwest, it's not looking good, but also it's not just a Midwest issue. We're talking about Florida, as well as California, Pennsylvania, certain parts of the South. This is again, a nationwide issue. But this is where things can shift into a positive direction. Looking at this next chart, this is how much you can see a reduction in these pollution deaths based off different diet scenarios. And yes, you can see that uh, the vegan one saves the most. Red meat in particular makes up a massive chunk of the current situation, but man, that's a lot of life saved from people going vegan. So there you go. This is what we can accomplish by eating avocado ice cream and, and other plants as well. <laughs> anyway, before we talk about some other solutions, I wanna mention that in no way is this calculating all of the deaths from animal agriculture and its effects. It's not getting into things like creating strains of antibiotic resistant bacteria like MRSA. No, we're not talking about how these same nitrates that go downstream can cause algae blooms that lead to toxic byproducts products that can lead to neurological issues, which hopefully I don't have, or how they can lead to nitrates in the well water, which has been documented to cause death on an ongoing basis, even in the US. But there's one even airborne chemical that I was familiar with before this that could also be a culprit that was not included, and that is hydrogen sulfide. Now, if you're familiar with this, you might tell me, hey, that's just sort of a respiratory irritant. Yeah, there's some evidence that it can cause some neurological issues like tremors and stuff from people around these confined animal feeding operations, factory farms, etc. But there's one more effect that I think is pretty compelling and that has to do with the stank. Hydrogen sulfide smells like rotten eggs. It's really not nice if you live in Iowa and you walk by or drive by a pig farm. It's horrible smelling, you wanna plug your nose, but people live near these. In Iowa, again, where I live, the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources, actually over several years spot checked the hydrogen sulfide levels at 16 different sites like houses, and they found that nearly half of them were over the state limit of 30 parts per billion over a period of seven hours or greater, which is the official amount that is too high. Now here's where there actually could be a real death connection as Wired put it, hog farm stink raises neighbors blood pressure. And from this study, like noise and other repetitive environmental stressors, malodors, or just bad odors, may be associated with acute blood pressure increases that could contribute to development of chronic hypertension. And as you know, higher blood pressure is a risk factor for cardiovascular diseases, which our leading killing disease is. And also they are a risk for increased all-cause mortality, which is what we're talking about here. Saying all this to say that even in terms of air pollution alone, the death rate from animal agriculture is probably even higher, but either way, 
there are solutions that can help. In terms of animals, you can simply not overfeed them to grow as fast as possible so that you aren't having all of these nitrates emitted from these animals, extra ones that they didn't even need, which then down the line lead to these pollutants. In addition, you can also lower the amount of chemical fertilizer that you're spraying on plants in general, which would massively lower this as well. And as I already mentioned, the more plant-based you eat, stepwise relationship with lower, with vegan being the lowest pollutant emissions. In the end, yes, this was a vegan just telling you one more way that animal agriculture sucks is bad, but I think it's good to learn about these things. It's an interesting chemical phenomenon that happens. It's good to know what's around, what's in our air, where it is, etc. but not get too paranoid. And last point, fruit is one of those plant foods that is lower than animal foods in terms of these emissions. And one fruit is avocados. Again, you can check out cottoicecream.com and use vegan20 for 20% off. And finally, if you just want to know more about those flavors, last year, the vegan view did an in-depth flavor test of a bunch of cotto flavors. Mm. That's so creamy. Together. Oh, it's so good. It's oh like God. creamy. It's very tangy. I'm tangy, like a lemon sorbet, but like not as acidic. Yes. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like, subscribe, and pressure your local politicians to lower the amount of air pollution. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.